Three years ago in Pittsburgh, 11 Jews were murdered and seven injured while doing the most Jewish of things, offering Shabbat prayers at their synagogue called the Tree of Life. Furthermore, this far-right extremist claimed he was angered by the community's support of immigration rights, by this community's very expression of their Jewish values. This past summer, protests against Israel's war in Gaza turned violent. Jews were attacked because they wore a kippah, or they dined at a Jewish restaurant, and that somehow these outward manifestations of their Jewish, Jewishness made them legitimate targets for their attackers' anger at Israel's actions. Make no mistake, anti-Semitism and this murderous hatred and these violent attacks have no rational explanations. There is no such legitimacy. It is folly to suggest that if Israel was not so heavy-handed in its response to Hamas rockets, or if Jews were not so supportive of liberal causes, anti-Semitism would somehow cease. One in four American Jews has been targeted by anti-Semitism during the past year, including 17% of whom were subjected, subjected to anti-Semitic remarks in person and 12% who experienced anti-Semitism online or on social media. Congregants share with me more and more stories of how a longtime acquaintance blurted out some anti-Semitic remarks. On the right, this increase in anti-Semitism appears to have begun with the conservative embrace of fringe groups. When political leaders fail to denounce anti-Semitism or hatred of any group from within their own ranks, anti-Semitism flourishes. The trial now beginning in Charlottesville is an important step forward. Take away the funding of those who support violent anti-Semitism and hatred. Speak out against those who defend the absurd protests against mask wearing and vaccine mandates with Nazi analogies. Defend free speech, but know and understand its limits and limitation. Does free speech really mean that factual inaccuracy should be allowed to flourish online? On the left, this increase in anti-Semitism appears to have begun with the liberal embrace of racial justice. Let's be clear. Racial justice for African Americans is not the same as justice for Palestinians. The insistence that the sins of America's founding, as great as this country is, let's admit, sins were committed against Native Americans and African Americans. But these are not the same as wrongs Israel committed in its founding. To be blunt, Jews were murdered by Palestinians and Palestinians were expelled by Israelis. But I do not want to, wit to explore the rights and wrongs committed in each of these struggles except to say they're not the same. They are not equal. Academics and American liberals appear to insist that every victim has an oppressor and that we can view every struggle through the prism of these archetypes, victim and oppressor. And all we have to do is assign someone to one of these two categorizations. And so in this worldview, the Jew is the oppressor and the Israeli is the same as the white police officer with his knee on George Floyd's neck. When fighting the anti-Semitism of the right, it is easier to draw a clear, bright line between right and wrong, good and evil. On the left, the fight is far more difficult and the lines become blurry. 
how can I simultaneously support George Floyd and the countless others whose names I don't even know and also support Israel's right to defend itself against the genocidal designs of Hamas and Iran? We become lost in the questioning. We become lost in the confusion. I can defend Israel and fight for racial justice. But again, make no mistake, Anti-Semitism is anti-Semitism. Seeing Israel as the Jew among nations is anti-Semitic. Israel is powerful. And sometimes it wields its power for good and sometimes for bad. It is like America and every other country for that matter. Nations, or at least the good among them, struggle to live up to a noble vision of themselves. They falter. They look within. They try to correct themselves. They try to do better. That is how I see America, and that is how I see Israel. But the world appears to behave in a way suggesting that as long as Jews are small and not mighty, as long as we are victims and not powerful, as long as we don't wield our might with an army or defend ourselves by achieving political prominence, and the world is content with our place. My response to that is no way. Zionism has taught me that it is not just about our return to the land, but our return to history. It is about taking charge of our destiny and not allowing others to write our own story. Our fate is in our hands. We are not going to grovel to the whims of others. Do not think that if we were not supportive of immigration rights or if our numbers were not so well represented in the calls for racial justice, anti-Semitism would somehow cease. Do not think that if we don't wear a kippah outside or hide the addresses of our synagogues, anti-Semitism would go away. Theodore Herzl was right when he said that if you will it, it is not a dream. But he was wrong. He was wrong when he said that once the state of Israel was established, anti-Semitism would dissolve into ancient history. I do not know why. I do not understand why this hatred, why this darkness among all others, persists and defies all our attempts to stamp it out. I do know this. I will never cower. I will never be silenced. I will sing the songs of my tradition. I will, I will shout with pride of my Jewish identity. When I look up, when I lift my eyes as Abraham, Isaac, and Rebecca do in this week's portion, I cannot know like them what is off in the distance. I cannot know if this is once again a test. But I can know. I can know what every single one of us feels. Things have changed, and we feel tentative about our home. So I resolve the following. No one, no one can ever make me feel that this place is not my home. No one can ever make me feel that Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, is not our home. Gone are the days of youthful naivete when I thought, despite my grandparents' objections, that anti-Semitism no longer existed. And in their place is more pride and more resilience and an even greater sense that I will forever hold my head high and proclaim that I am proud to be a Jew. I will lift up my eyes and see clearly that this hatred still lurks and foments even here, even in our beloved United States. And I will lift up my eyes with great pride that this is my tradition and that to be a Jew is a blessing and a gift. Ken Yehi may it always be God's will.